John Burks, also known as Dizzy Gillespie, was born in Shuraw, South Carolina on October 21st, 1917. Gillespie started playing the piano at the age of four, and by the age of 12, could play the piano, trombone, and his most famous instrument, the trumpet. Being so musically diverse, he received a music scholarship to the Lurenberg Institute in North Carolina, and attended there for two years until he moved to Philadelphia with his family. By the age of 18, Gillespie was a professional musician. His first professional job was with the Frank Fairfax Orchestra in 1935. Following this, he eventually went on to join the Teddy Hill Band. Dizzy copied the style of Teddy Hill's trumpeter Roy Eldridge early in his career and ended up replacing Eldridge in 1937. In this same year, Gillespie was playing a gig in Washington, D.C., where he met a young dancer, Lorraine Willis, whom he grew close with and would eventually marry in May of 1940. After playing for the Teddy Hill Band, Gillespie decided to leave and freelanced with several other bands. In 1939, Gillespie joined the Cab Calloway Orchestra, where he recorded one of his earliest compositions, Pickin' the Cabbage. After a questionable altercation between Calloway and Gillespie in 1941, depicted in Gene Bach's 1997 film The Spitball Story, Calloway fired Gillespie. During this same time, Gillespie had already wrote big band music for a few bands such as Ella Fitzgerald's Orchestra, Woody Herman, and Jimmy Dorsey. Dizzy Gillespie is credited as one of the founders of bebop alongside with artists like Charlie Parker. The first bebop recording session in 1944 featured Gillespie's Woody and You, and this sound was radically different from the swing music that was popular at the time. Gillespie found himself working alongside with popular saxophonist Charlie Parker, and the two came together to make the iconic duo Bird and Diz. Gillespie and Parker worked together in the 1940s, and Gillespie's composition during this time were different rhythmically and harmonically from the swing music popular. After his work with Charlie Parker ended in 1945, Gillespie led several small combos before eventually putting together a big band with which he tried to popularize bebop. In 1948, Gillespie was involved in a traffic accident. While riding a bicycle, he was hit by an automobile. The resulting injury left him unable to hit the B-flat above high C, which would change his musical style forever. In the late 1940s, Gillespie was a part of the Afro-Cuban music movement. Afro-Cuban jazz was considered bebop-oriented and brought Afro-Latin American musical elements, specifically rhythms, to a greater prominence in jazz. Gillespie's most famous contributions to Afro-Cuban music are the composition of Mantica and Ten Ten Deo. Throughout the rest of his career, Gillespie continued to stay true to bebop in the Afro-Cuban styles of jazz. Later in 1953, Gillespie threw a party in a popular Manhattan club. During the party, somehow his trumpet was what he thought destroyed and bent at a 45 degree angle. He ended up playing and loved the new sound. However, he had his trumpet straightened out the next day and back to its original condition but he just couldn't get over the sound that the bent one had made. In the days following, he had someone sketch up what his bent instrument looked like, and he sent it in for a real one to be manufactured. Gillespie used this new trumpet sound and appearance as his trademark. Alongside with his blowfish cheeks while he was playing, Gillespie was set apart from all other musicians. In 1964, during the presidential campaign, Gillespie put himself forward as an independent write-in candidate as a joke. He promised that if he were elected, the White House would be renamed the Blues House and, would he, and he would have a cabinet composed of some of the greats, Duke Ellington, Miles Davis, Max Roach, Charles Mingus, Louis Armstrong, and many more. Campaign buttons had already been manufactured years before by Gillespie's booking agency, but just for publicity as a gag. But now, proceeds from them went to benefit the Congress of Racial Qual Equality, Southern Christian Leadership Conference, and Martin Luther King Jr., showing enormous support for the black power and civil rights movement. 
1979, Gillespie published his autobiography, To Be or Not to Bop. For the remainder of his career, Gillespie continued to work with prominent artists and bands such as the United Nations Orchestra, Stevie Wonder, and Moe Kaufman. In 1989, he was named Regent Professor by the University of California and received his 14th honorary doctoral degree, this one from the Berklee College of Music. That same year, he was awarded the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. And just months after his 75th birthday concert at Carnegie Hall, Gillespie died on July 6, 1993, of pancreatic cancer. In 2014, he was inducted into the New Jersey Hall of Fame. Gillespie's most famous song is arguably A Night in Tunisia. Gillespie wrote it alongside with Charlie Parker, and this song has become an important jazz standard. The song was originally titled Interlude when Dizzy first wrote it and it was recorded with what, with what was known as the first big band, Billy Eckstein's Big Band, featuring Gillespie, Parker, and vocalist Sarah Vaughan. While this song has several arrangements, the one that will be played is without vocals and with a simple emphasis on the musicians. While you're listening, try to find the Afro-Cuban rhythms and Gillespie's innovative harmony and melody. Also listen for a complex bass line at the beginning, which is much different from the typical walking bass, as well as chord changes that cause a mysterious feeling. <laughs> 